In the last module we had said that next we are going to discuss a little more about angular momentum. But then uh, as uh, is often the case I had a second thought. Uh, so what we will do is uh, in the next module we are going to discuss angular momentum. But today let us uh, finish up something that is a logical next step of the discussion we have had in the previous module. And that is something very interesting and often very useful. What we learn in this module is how do we draw pictures of uh, spherical harmonics? Uh, how do we draw pictures especially of the theta part? Uh, to do that we learn something called polar plots. So polar plots themselves are uh, interesting and useful in many cases. So this is a corollary of doing this course you get to learn something that is useful uh, in uh, other uh, fields as well. Just to recapitulate we are discussing a rotating diatomic molecule. Uh, we have reduced the two body problem to a one body problem by using reduced mass mu and we have uh, understood that since we are talking about a rigid rotor we would better use spherical polar coordinates. In spherical polar coordinates r theta phi we have discussed the relationship among uh, between the Cartesian coordinates and uh, the spherical polar coordinates and uh, we have said that we are going to take r as a constant r0 because we are talking about a rigid rotor. But uh, this theta phi what is theta what is phi these are things that we have discussed in the previous module and we continue to discuss them in this module as well. So, uh, the point of discussion today starts from here. We know that the wave functions are essentially uh, spherical harmonics uh, product of a phi part and a theta part. And we also said that uh, well we worked out that the phi part is an imaginary part of the wave function where it is a constant multiplied by e to the power i m phi. What is m? m is uh, 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2 so on and so forth. It is uh, the magnetic quantum number if you want to call it that and as we see now later uh, it stands for the z component of angular momentum. The theta part is essentially uh, associated legendary polynomials in cos theta. Please remember in cos theta not in theta not in phi not in x y z but in cos theta. So, you could say in z actually. So, this is the total wave function some constant multiplied by a polynomial in cos theta multiplied by e to the power i m phi. And then uh, we learned that when we make this operator uh, Hamiltonian and we worked out Hamiltonian from uh, L square by 2 i knowing the classical relationship and knowing the operator L square or at least uh, what uh, implication it has on this wave functions we formulated the Hamiltonian to be L square by 2 mu r 0 square again mu is rest mass uh, sorry mu is uh, reduced mass and r 0 is the length of the rigid rotor bond length in case of diatomic molecule. We make this operate on spherical harmonics and knowing that L square operates on spherical harmonics to give us j into j plus 1 multiplied by a constant we get h square divided by 8 pi square mu r 0 multiplied by j into j plus 1. This uh, eigenvalue of Hamiltonian is the energy in joule the rotational energy and j is a rotational quantum number which ranges from 0 1 to so on and so forth. And we also said that generally we like to represent epsilon j in terms of b where b is h by 8 pi square i c. When we do that we uh, write it in terms of centimeter inverse and uh, the expression becomes very simply epsilon j is equal to b into j into j plus 1 in centimeter inverse. And then uh, we had said we had worked out these vibration uh, rotational energies for the different rotational quantum numbers and we found 
that the first of all of course energy is quantized, secondly the energy gap keeps increasing as we go up the ladder, but the difference in energy gaps is always 2b. So, we have 0, 2b, 6b, 12p, this difference is 2b, this difference is 6b. So, 6b minus 2b is 4b, right. So, so on and so forth we can uh, work this out and we talked a little bit about your uh, rotational spectrum. We said that for a rigid rotor we expect a uh, an equispaced rotational spectrum and from there we can figure out b and hence we can get, develop an understanding of the bond length of a diatomic molecule modeled by a rigid rotor. This is where we got uh, until the last uh, module. Okay. Today let us focus on the theta part of the wave function, the uh, associated Legendre polynomial multiplied by some constant. And here is a table of all the theta parts for j equal to 0, 1 and 2. Of course, you can go higher up but makes no sense. So, what you see is that uh, this theta is really a function of j and mod m. It does not matter whether m has a positive value or negative value, you get the same uh, theta part of the wave function. So, for j equal to 0, m equal to 0, the uh, wave function is just a constant, just a constant. For j equal to 1, you can have uh, 3 values of m 0 and plus minus 1. When uh, m is plus minus 1, you get the theta part to be root over 3 by 4 sin theta. And when m equal to 0 for j equal to 1, the theta part turns out to be root over 3 by 2 cos theta. When j equal to 2, you can have 5 values of m. Remember m takes up values of uh, minus m, 2 plus m through 0 increasing uh, in steps of 1. So, when m equal to plus minus 2 for j equal to 2, we get the theta part of root over 15 by 16 sin square theta. When it is plus minus 1, we get root over 15 by 14 sin theta cos theta and for m equal to 0 for j equal to 1, we get root over 5 by 8 and I really like this function 3 cos square theta minus 1. I will uh, maybe tell you later why I like this function very much, but this is something that uh, keeps occurring in uh, many, many places. In rigid rotor, hydrogen atom, NMR spectroscopy, fluorescence spectroscopy, this 3 cos square theta minus 1 keeps on uh, recurring all the time. Okay. Uh, more about it a little later. Now let us learn how to draw this, uh, these uh, functions in a very nice manner. Of course, you can draw it in Cartesian plane, but then uh, this one gives you a more unique idea because here the way you draw uh, what is called a polar plot is first of all as you can see this is a uh, polar plot graph paper downloaded from this link. As you see it is circular and uh, you have two kinds of coordinates, one is an angle you can read here uh, 0, 15 degree, 30 degree, 40 degree, 6, 45 degree, 60 degree, so on and so forth. Uh, in this particular graph paper, the angular increment shown is in uh, 15 degrees. Okay. Then we go from 0 degrees to 360 degrees in uh, the graph paper. Okay. And so, uh, the independent variable is this angle. How do you write the dependent variable? Suppose you want to plot something sin theta cos theta sin theta cos theta whatever, there will be a function in theta is not it? That function in theta is a dependent variable and the absolute value please remember this, this is very important. The absolute value of this function of the dependent variable is given by the length and we are going to uh, just take an arbitrary example to start with. And then we will show you some polar plots of actual theta parts of wave functions. Okay. So, just remember that the dependent variable, well absolute value of the dependent variable uh, is shown as the length. So, suppose for, uh, okay, let us go to the example and then we will see. What happens 
uh, when uh, there is a minus sign it is not necessary that the all functions are going to be positive. What happens is a minus sign absolute value will still be the length. Remember if you go from this side to this side uh, the length is still positive. It is important to understand the uh, axis here. One axis is like this an angle right well like this anticlockwise in this case 0, 15, 30 like this. The other one is just the length. I mean if you go instead of going uh, in this direction if you go in this direction it does not mean that the length has become negative length has remained positive it's just that you have gone through 180 suppose uh, let us talk about this line here it does not mean uh, well maybe this line it does not mean that this length is negative ok. Suppose I read this this is still 7 where the circle is right now ok this is still 7 it is just that the angle is 240 degrees. Please remember the length cannot be negative here. So, how do we show a change in sign? Suppose I want to plot sin theta cos theta which we will. There will be a change in sign. How do we show it? We will see. Uh, we will cross that bridge when we come to it. Right now let us take one step at a time. So, what we will do is we will just give you some arbitrary values of uh, uh, some function of theta capital theta for each value of theta and we will go in increments of 15 degrees and uh, we are going to plot it on this graph. By the time we are done I hope everybody will understand how to draw polar plots. So, let us get going. Let us say that the value of capital theta the function remember capital letter denotes function small letter denotes variable or coordinate. Let us say uh, capital theta for theta equal to 0 degree is 6 ok. What does that mean? 0 degrees this is the angle and if you read, read of the length that is 6. So, this is where we should put a point like this ok. Theta equal to 0 degrees capital theta is 6 degrees this is where the point comes capital theta is just read of 6 ok. Next let us say for 15 degrees it is 7. The function capital theta has a value of 7 when theta has a value of 15 degree. That means what? From here you have to go here 15 degrees and it is marked here. How far should we go here along this line? So, all these lines are radial lines is not it? Do you see all these lines actually go through the center is not it? So, these are basically radii. So, along the radius a certain length along the radius is what uh, stands for the absolute value of the function in theta. So, if it is 7 then I have to read off 7 this is where 7 is ok. So, this is where it will be dependent variable theta equal to 15 degrees and uh, well sorry independent variable theta is 15 degrees and dependent variable capital theta has a value of 7. So, this is where the point should come. So, we put the point there. Now, let us say uh, for theta equal to 30 degrees capital theta is 5. Similarly, what do we do? Go from 0 up to 30 degrees capital theta is 5. So, read off 5. So, it is that will be this circle. So, this is where the point should come ok. Now, let us say for 45 degrees uh, capital theta is 4. Can you try to put the point yourself? Just put it on your computer or mobile screen with your finger. And then when the point comes you can verify whether you have got it right or not. Have you done it? Yeah. Please put the finger where you think the point should come for uh, theta equal to 45 degrees all right. This is where it should come ok. Th theta is 45 degrees capital theta is 4 degrees. I hope you have put the finger in the right spot. If not here is one more chance. For 60 degrees I am saying the value of capital theta is 2.5. Can you put your finger uh, where theta equal to 60 degrees and capital theta equal to 2.5 would be? Put a finger on your screen and check whether you have put the finger in the right place which is this ok. Uh, let us say for 75 degrees it is at 1 and I show you where it is it is here and let us say for 90 degrees it is 0. Okay, I want it to become 0 because I want it to change sign and 
uh, we also want to discuss what happens when uh, how you show a change in sign. Okay. So, this is what it is. Next let us say for 105 degrees okay, where is 105 degrees just go like this 105 degrees this is what it is. So, it will come somewhere along this line is not it. For 105 degrees I am saying that uh, the value of capital theta is minus 1. Now, how do I show it? As I said the distance is only an absolute value. How do I show minus sign? Well, there are two ways first is you can use color or you can just write plus or minus. By the time we are done with this plot we are going to do both. Right now let us change the color from what it was in uh, when uh, capital theta was positive. Since capital theta is negative when theta equal to 105 degrees we use a different color and put the spot here. For 120 degrees it is minus 2.5. So, where will it be? Please remember 125 degrees is this it will not come here because it is negative because that is actually 300 degrees it has to be uh, somewhere on this line itself and the color has to be that of uh, negative functions. So, this is it I think I goofed a little bit with this 105 degrees one I, it is moved a little but it is fine I think you understand. 135 degrees I am saying it is minus 4 where will it be put your finger and do not forget the color right and for 150 degrees it is here for uh, 165 degrees it is minus 7 and for 180 degrees it is minus 6. So, I have uh, generated a set of fairly symmetric functions. Okay. So, what we have learnt is how to make polar plots and how to include sign in polar plots as well because in uh, polar plots as they are there is no provision for sign. You have to either use color or write plus and minus in the regions where the function is plus or minus and that is how you get uh, the polar plot. One thing I forgot to include in this plot but we have in the subsequent slides is where is the node. You can see here obviously node is at 90 degrees yeah because the 90 degrees not only is capital theta 0 but it also changes sign from 1 at 75 degrees to minus 1 at 105 degrees. So, where is the node theta equal to 90 degrees where is that right here you draw a line like this that is your theta equal to 90 degree node. Okay. Nodes are very important in our discussions that are going to follow. Okay. Uh, before we uh, go to more realistic uh, capital theta functions uh, let me remind you that the range of theta is 0 to 180 degrees only. So, even though uh, the polar plot graph paper goes all the way from 0 to 360 degrees. When talking about some function of theta we should never use the part of the graph paper from 180 degrees to uh, 360 degrees because theta is not I mean values of theta greater than 180 degrees is not even there right. The graph paper has to be more general because suppose you want to plot phi now then what will happen you need to go from 0 to 360 degrees. But for theta please do not draw uh, dots on this side also please stop at theta equal to 180 degrees. Okay. You are going to generate functions and I am going to show you you can generate values for theta greater than 180 degrees also, but it does not make sense because the upper limit of theta is 180 degrees by definition. Okay. So, please remember you should not draw anything beyond theta equal to 180 degrees. If you are if you are drawing a function in phi then it is fine you can go up to 360 degrees you should go up to 360 degrees. Okay. So, this is how one draws polar plots. Now, let us go ahead and let us see uh, examples of polar plots of 
actual spherical harmonics in uh, theta. If you might remember that this was one of the wave functions root over 15 by 14 sin theta cos theta okay? and what I show you here is the polar plot of this function. I have made this diagram ugly by putting this rectangle explicitly just to highlight the fact that there is no theta beyond 180 degrees. So, you should not draw anything here. In fact, I used a program grapher for uh, generating this plot and grapher does not know that I am working with theta. So, it had actually generated all the way from 0 to uh, 360 degrees. We should not when we construct uh, functions of the azimuthal angle theta because as we said several times theta uh, has an upper limit of 2 of uh, 180 degrees. Okay. Now, let us look at this a little closely. So, at theta equal to 0 degrees what is the value of sin theta? What is the value of cos theta? Value of cos, cos theta is 1 and value of sin theta is 0. So, the product sin theta cos theta will uh, of course be equal to 0. So, for theta equal to 0 sin theta cos theta equal to 0. Where does it become 0 once again? Well, where does sin theta become uh, 0 once again at uh, theta equal to pi theta equal to 180 degrees? Then again the product is 0. Where does cos theta become equal to 0? When theta equal to 90 degrees right and as we will see that is really the node. Okay, we will come back to that. So, uh, where is the node? The node is if I write sin theta cos theta equal to 0, uh, sin theta equal to 0 is not a node remember because uh, sin theta equal to 0 at theta equal to 0 and theta equal to pi. At theta equal to 0 and theta equal to pi they are like the limits of the universe as far as theta is concerned. Theta does not exist beyond uh, a value of 0 degrees and beyond a value of 180 degrees also. So, th those are sort of the boundaries. So, those are not nodes. So, sin theta equal to 0 would not give you the nodes. What gives you nodes is cos theta equal to 0 and cos theta equal to 0 means theta is equal to 90 degrees. This is what we had uh, sort of mentioned in the previous slide also. This here is your node. So, uh, okay, let us uh, convince ourselves in a different way. Uh, this is from 0 to 90 degrees first quadrant sin theta is positive cos theta is also positive. So, the product will be positive. What about the second quadrant where theta lies between 90 degrees and 180 degrees there sin theta is still positive remember all sin tan cos. So, uh, sin theta is still positive but cos theta is negative. So, sin theta cos theta has to become negative. Right? So, uh, we verify that when you go from theta little less than 90 degree to th little more than 90 degree then uh, theta actually goes to 0 and changes sign. All right. So, we have drawn the uh, we have drawn the node let us now write the signs explicitly. In the first quadrant we said the sign is going to be positive and in second quadrant sign is going to be negative. Does this remind you of anything? This positive negative business I will uh, help you a little bit by telling you that this thing that we see here is called a lobe. So, we have a lobe with a plus sign and we have a lobe with a minus sign. So, the lobe where uh, we have written a plus sign is the lobe in which uh, the wave function capital theta has a positive sign and the lobe where there is a minus sign is the wave function where uh, is the lobe where the wave function has a minus sign. Okay? So, this plus and minus is really the sign or phase if you want to put it that way well sign is better I think sign of the wave function in that region. Great. Now, let me draw let us show you my favorite function 3 cos square theta minus 1 multiplied by some constant. All right. So, we have uh, given you a spoiler by showing you the diagram already, but let us explain nevertheless. Why do we have this color triangle here? because remember theta goes from 0 to 180 degrees. There is no theta beyond 180 degrees. So, it makes no sense 
to uh, try and draw the function in this space as well. So, I sort of dotted it out. Now, 3 cos square theta minus 1 it is always easy to work with 0 where is that equal to 0 where cos square theta minus 1 equal to 0 or cos theta equal to 1 by root over 3 is that right cos theta equal to 1 by root over 3 is that right partially right because uh, when we say cos square theta equal to 1 by 3 there is no reason why we should neglect uh, cos theta equal to minus 1 by root 3. So, you should consider that also ok. So, cos theta equal to uh, minus 1 by root 3 will obviously come in the uh, second quadrant, the second uh, quadrant uh, because uh, that is where cos theta is negative and we do not have to worry about beyond that because as we said there is no theta beyond 180 degrees ok. So, where is the node or rather where are the nodes at theta equal to uh, cos inverse well at uh, theta equal to cos inverse 1 by root 3 yeah that gives us node at uh, 54.7 degree and 180 degrees minus 54.7 degree which is 125.3 degree. This 54.7 degree is called magic angle and remember at magic angle cos theta equal to 1 by root 3 ok. Uh, maybe later on if possible we will come back to why what is so magical about this magic angle ok. So, this is these are the nodes and we have already shown the nodes by the black lines here. So, then uh, what happens for theta less than 54.7 degrees yeah uh, 3 cos square theta minus 1 is obviously positive right it has a plus sign we put a plus here. What happens between theta equal to 54.7 degree and theta equal to 125.3 degree? So, these are nodes so sign change has taken place and here again sign change will take place. So, here in this lobe the sign is obviously minus and then when you cross the second uh, node again the sign becomes plus. Okay. So, this is the kind of picture that we generate for 3 cos square theta minus 1 when we try and draw a polar plot of it and put in the uh, nodes as well. Okay. This is 3 cos square theta minus 1 and you can go back and see for which wave function we get 3 cos square theta minus 1 for which value of j which value of m. Okay. And please do not forget that we are going to encounter exactly same wave functions when we talk about a hydrogen atom shortly. Now to conclude this discussion let me show you from uh, this link here. The way spherical harmonics are usually designated in textbooks to get this nice looking pictures where this is psi 0 0 that means j equal to 0 m equal to 0 that psi that y rather is just equal to 1 you normalize it that way y 1 0 is cos theta y 2 0 is 3 cos square theta minus 1 that is what we have worked out y 2 1 is cos theta sin theta sin phi. So, here this phi term also comes into play what are we doing here how have we generated this picture we have taken what we have obtained earlier and then do not forget theta equal to 0 means this is sort of the z axis is not it. So, about the z axis uh, you perform a rotation when you do that you essentially scan all values of phi and that is when you generate this 3D pictures ok. But remember in this 3D picture what are the coordinates that are there one coordinate is theta fine another coordinate is phi fine the third coordinate is not r the third coordinate is the uh, wave function ok actually magnitude of wave function and sign here also is shown by this very nice looking colors. You can see that this is plus and this is minus and you can see this nodal plane that is there ok. So, uh, I hope you can relate this picture with the one that we had drawn for 3 cos square theta minus 1 and I hope 
that you can relate this picture with what we had drawn for your uh, for the earlier one sin theta cos theta. But do these pictures remind you of something? Yeah, even if you have never heard of spherical harmonics earlier, you have seen pictures that look like this, haven't you? Actually, you have, and I think most of you by now would have uh, remembered where you saw these pictures. You saw these pictures when you talked about orbitals, and these were uh, touted to be the shapes of orbitals, where orbitals were supposed to have been uh, regions of space where probability of finding the electron is maximum. So, we are going to debunk that definition in uh, the next two or three uh, well not two or three uh, next three or four modules, but again let us wait for that. Uh, what I want to say is that the spherical harmonics we get for rigid rotor look remarkably like the pictures that you are familiar to seeing familiar with seeing for uh, so called orbitals. Okay. And that is because you have a similar part for a hydrogen atom Schrodinger equation, you have similar solutions. Okay. That concludes for now our discussion on rigid rotor. In the next module, we will discuss uh, angular momentum and its components in a little more detail, then we go on to hydrogen atom.